just learning that to keep going and training your mind, like what you tell it and then what you feed it and how it's full circle, right? Like I, you know, I think about it and it's like, well, if I need to show up and run a business with a mindset, you know, I'm at 20K now, well, like as it continues to grow, it's like, well, what does someone who's at 50K a month, how are they showing up in their life? Not just in their business, but in their life. Like I think about that and it holds me accountable. James Shremko here. Welcome back to my podcast. This is episode 1006. Today we're chatting with Stephanie Parisi. Welcome. Hey, thanks. It's really good to get to know you uh, now over Zoom, as it turns out. I've been back and forthing with you on social media, inside my own community as well. And I feel like I've been watching you over time uh, d- develop and build a membership. And lately, you sort of gave us an update, which was really heartfelt and encouraging. And I I sort of want to start with that. In your update, you indicated that you're now getting continuous months of recurring income from providing solutions to your audience on an ongoing basis, that it's going strong and that you are feeling really encouraged by the results. And and something that sort of stood out to me is you've got it down to a, a good science. I think you've got your system in place. And there's a lot of lessons, I think, for me, for everyone else in how those systems look. So I'll definitely want to delve into that. You've got the structure. You've got the business model now that seems to be working well for your life. I picked up some sort of hints between the social posts that you may have moved or done some long distance transitions at at some point. You've still been doing your sporting activities. So it seems like you haven't had to put all of the rest of your life on hold while you got this business working to the point it does. Uh, but one thing that really I thought was was interesting is you said that you've been using parts of my membership and training along the way, even though you haven't always been super vocal or interactive, uh, you've been absorbing and implementing the trainings and getting results. And I love that because it speaks to something that I hear about a lot, and that is people saying, oh, I'm not getting all this engagement in my community and I'm I'm saying well there's different types of engagement if someone's consuming information and applying it but they don't tell you every five seconds you know what their cat's up to that doesn't mean they're not taking it on board or getting results so that it can be a misleading metric I think but I'm really curious to know how that works for you because I think your audience is predominantly mums and small business operators you're fairly heavily social media centric in terms of where you're marketing where you're delivering some solutions and also what you're teaching. So Stephanie, let's just wind the clock back a little bit and tell me about when you were starting this online journey, what did that look like? Okay. So I started in October of 2019. That's when I started my membership. And I really didn't know what I was getting into at the time with starting a membership, but I knew it was possible and that I could figure it out as I went. And thankfully, um, everything was virtual online. So when COVID and the pandemic hit in 2020, like it didn't phase anything. Um, I just was rolling with my business. And, you know, I start. I think my first month in business, I was at like $400, you know, and I was excited about that $400 just because like I was doing something new that I had never done before. And, you know, to come now to the point, like you mentioned, hitting work, you know, my current monthly recurring income is 20k so I've come a ways but when I stumbled across you it was primarily because I knew that I needed someone that was doing memberships really well evergreen and it wasn't consuming every waking moment of their life and I specifically was looking for learning how to bring on team members and train them And so that like I had seen you commenting online and was like, you know, doing I do the whole social media thing where I stalk people's profiles, see who they are, look them up, look at their sites. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to see what James is teaching. Well, that's very interesting and reassuring. So (laughs) um, I think it's good for people to do due diligence. I've often wondered how do people end up paying big money in some cases for programs where they haven't done a little bit of sort of looking around and paying attention to like if you if you want a certain result or outcome it's a good idea to seek out people who are getting that certain result or or outcome and so that's why uh, for example if you wanted to go down the launching path 
and do those big chaotic festivals of energy where you have like basically swinging from the ropes through the jungle and hopefully you don't miss because it's it's like it's an all or nothing type model then those people are great but they're not the ones to follow for recurring easygoing subscription income and i imagine twenty thousand dollars really helps out with the household uh, expenses and can afford you a reasonable quality of life oh for us it's i mean it's life-changing i mean we both my husband and i are home i run my business he retired last year from the military and it had always been my goal when i had gotten started in the online space working that when he was done like we would have a choice like that was kind of always my long-term vision and in november of 2021 like i i hit that goal and so then this last year we moved we packed up like you said we moved across the country just being able to like buy a home outright not have any we have no debt and then to have a work that i'm in control of right like i wake up every day and i'm like if i don't like what i'm doing i like dug that hole like it's up for me to like fix it correct it and so yeah it's been it's been fun and it's one of those things i feel like i'm always continually learning but not always learning how to do all these new things. But like, I think like when we bring it back to your membership, some of the things it's like, there are trainings that I've listened to probably 10 times, 20 times, because it's like, I just want to get really good at that. It's like, I don't need everything there, but it's, I mean, the mindset one, uh, like there's some mindset trainings of yours that I've just listened to on repeat because I knew, okay, if that's the limiting factor for me to go from a five figure year to a six figure year, well, then I'm going to listen to it. And then same with the membership, you say that like, like when I first found you, I bought a $10 course of yours before jumping in your membership, because I was like, well, let me see, like, I was interested in the membership, but I was like, well, let me see what, how good is $10 courses. And it was great. Like it was the one on hiring. Um, how to recruit your next team member. Yeah. Yes. And so it was like, okay, with that, then I was like, okay, this is what I, I need someone to show me basically those steps. So, and today I have three team members. So it's exciting to like be at that place. How good is that? I mean, I'm listening to the words you're saying and I'm picking up such strong mindset cues that it's very knowing to me it's how, how you're getting these results you're taking massive responsibility you you own your own hole that you've dug that's rare a lot of people are waiting for someone else to gift them success but you've gone out and, and rolled up the sleeves and and you're a doer i think that reflects too from your sporting mindset i, I think you run long distances i i have yet to achieve a 50k but i love doing distance trail runs i love being out in the mountains backpacking and just like to me if i had spent like the perfect vacation would be like in a beautiful middle of nowhere with no one around for several weeks. And it's just me living off the land, like hiking or running. So yeah, I love, I love that. And you do learn, like, it's definitely just learning that to keep going and training your mind, like what you tell it and then what you feed it and how it's full circle, right? Like I, you know, I think about it and it's like, well, if I need to show up and run a business, with a mindset, you know, I'm at 20K now. Well, like as it continues to grow, it's like, well, what does someone who's at 50K a month, how are they showing up in their life? Not just in their business, but in their life. Like I think about that and it holds me accountable. Yeah. And, and that's what I liked about your update. You shared some sort of progress of where you're up to, but you also asked questions on where the next stages are, of, of which I was able to help, obviously, because I've been through that that same sort of phase that you're in also for anyone listening to this wondering where can they get a, a hold of that program i'm pretty sure i give it away now on my products page i decided not to worry about selling things for ten dollars anymore so i mean you can buy my physical book for ten dollars but i give away my book as well on my site and i'm sure these these sort of breadcrumbs or these clues are useful for someone listening to this they could think well how can i help somebody get a great outcome for a small amount or free to, to give them confidence to buy something else of mine that's that's a nice takeaway i'm actually curious how you decide on the membership model in the very first place because a lot of people are they're getting confused should i drop ship should i do e-commerce should i have an agency should i build websites there's lots of different ways that you can make money online and also congratulations for making about 300 and 
$61 more than I did in my first month online. <laughs> <So> <laughs> how did you decide on the membership? You know, I don't, I'm trying to think back. I know that uh, I had done a, when I first got started, I had done this Facebook course that I sold for $10. And, but that was an entire year prior. It was one of those things where I really wanted to like go full steam into all of it. But we had found out that we were pregnant with our second child. And so I kind of just put it on pause because I knew that it was going to take a lot out of me to like launch a membership. And so I waited about nine months, really the month that he was due. And that's when I then started pouring really hardcore back into my network. And then about five months later, launched the membership. I think part of it was just the idea of wanting to um, form a community, right? Like people are in memberships for so many different reasons, right? Like we, you know this, I know this, but there's that level of some people just want it because there's the community aspect. Um, I have met some of my best entrepreneur friends in people's memberships to this day. Like people that aren't just my work friends, but they're like, like they are my friends, right? And so yeah. to be able to form that community on an online space and connect with people, especially because I connect with so many moms, we don't have the ability to just leave and go to meetings whenever we want to. Like I think the early years of even with my membership, I had a baby and a two-year-old at home. So hopping on a Zoom to do trainings with other women was very appealing even though it was like and then it was appealing also because I was profiting from it but providing value to my people right so it was this win-win of solving in some ways even that social connection with people but wanting to help them run their business and I don't know that I ever had this big vision of oh I need to do a membership but it was why not try it like why not go for it yeah, I mean, as, as a home parent, I can totally relate. It's nice to speak to another human that doesn't need their nappy changed or is crying for something. It's like, I said to a friend of mine uh, yesterday, like, I travel the world every week with my connections. And it's absolutely true. Some of my community members have become dear, close, deep friends. You know, some of my surfing friends are also in the community. And uh, I mean, I've had a community for a very long time. So I've got to see what it looks like when it's more mature. You will make some lifelong connections. I love that business model. Of course, there's lots of choices to make. What name do you call the membership? I just call it the pack. Originally, when I first got started, I was like, oh, it's the Parisi pack. And then I kind of just dropped my name off of it because it's not just about me. It's about everyone in it. Just simple. And you use your personal domain? Yes. Yeah. Always from day one, even with the people I train, like I'm very much into personal branding, you know, I have different income streams. And it isn't funny to me that people have followed me with whatever I do. And I don't say that arrogantly. It's just that I know that if I'm going to put my name behind something like people know that, oh, wow, like that's something that of, of value, like if I'm into what Stephanie is doing, oh, I'm going to start listening because she's talking about this or she's talking about that. And so I have people that I've worked with in different businesses throughout the years that, you know, are in my membership because it's just like, well, yeah, like I've had people when I've been doing my onboarding calls in my membership that they've literally been like, oh, yeah, I knew I was going to join it at some point. Like it was just a matter of when I had, you know, the right position or timing for my business. So that's always very encouraging to hear. Yeah, I like it. I mean, you can't hide behind a personal domain. It's it's you're up, you, your name's on the front there. You're responsible for it. it. Sounds like you have no issue with responsibility. I think it was one of the, the better choices I've made in the last few years was to switch across to that personal brand. I should have done it a lot earlier. But anyone listening to this, if you're going to build around your brand name, then it's it's probably going to get you an, an easier win at the beginning and, and more trust. But of course, you don't have to do everything yourself. I've got a small team. You've got a small team now of three people. What sort of things are they doing in the business? Yeah. So my business is very video centric since YouTube is where I get almost all of my leads coming in. I do get some from Facebook, but I love YouTube. And so I have one team member that primarily just does almost everything YouTube for me, aside from me physically being on the video as I'm filming. And then I have another team member that uh, helps do a lot of 
she's like me, except not me. So doing a lot of decision making when it comes to some things in my membership that just require a little bit of a higher level thinking skill. And then um, my other team member is books, doing all that, all the, all those things that really aren't fun, (laughs) but so important and knowing the numbers and seeing where things are going so I can make better decisions um, and moving forward and yeah, just making smart moves. You've got about three more team members than a lot of people would have at the the size you're at. And but a lot of people are probably working 50 or 60 hours a week to try and manage it all for, you know, for their two or $300,000 a year. So I think you've created a system that's scalable. What do you actually do with the YouTube videos? How do they generate you business? I'm actually asking for myself. <laughs> Haven't fully tapped into YouTube and I know that it's a gargantuan search engine. I've got clients who make 50 or $60,000 a month just in ad revenue, let alone any deal flow from it. But What's the strategy there? Yeah. So on YouTube, my main niche when I'm working with people is really teaching them Facebook, social media marketing, how to become the hunted, not the hunter. And so I teach a on YouTube, I'm teaching a lot of strategies when it comes to say stories or reels or I mean, the buttons are always going to change on the platform. So it's not so much, you know, what type of thing you're creating, but the message behind it how to make it appealing, attractive, the hooks, all those things. And then I've just really gotten that funnel down well. So I funnel like it's all into this revolving door. So I make the video in the video. I'm always leading people to a free private Facebook group that I run that has more marketing. And through that, they get entered into my email system. And so it's just this like circle. So I'm always in my Facebook group. I'm always pushing people back to my email and YouTube and then an email and pushing people back to the Facebook group and YouTube. And so it just is this revolving door. And so I probably have a good, oh, 30 to 70 people a week that join my free group where I'm just warming them, right? Like, because they're, they watch a video on YouTube, you're a total stranger, but I have it set up so they get in the group and then they're like, oh, wow, like this is a real person. Or they like book a strategy call with me and they're like, oh my gosh, that's like what I see in your videos, you know? And so people just are like very, they love the authenticity behind that. And then um, when you actually just start solving their problems, right? Like when they're like, okay, I don't know how to do this. And it's like, oh, here, let me either like shoot you a quick loom video or like just show them and give them something that they can go out and take and then get a quick win or result immediately from, um, especially with stories. I teach that a lot. And so when they then they're like, oh, wow, I did what you said. Four people voted on my poll and like one became a customer. It's like, that's a great place to be in with that person. I definitely picked up some little tips like that from following your social media. You, you've like seeing how you actually operate. And I remember even sharing with a couple of my own clients what I'd seen you do with your stories where you were very progressive. I think you were doing it at least six months or a year before I saw anyone else really following that method. Do you come up with this stuff yourself? Yes. And that's like I – my background is physical therapy or physiotherapy. And so even though I never knew that I was going to get into marketing or that I was good at it until I started, you know, tinkering with selling some things online. And then I realized how much I enjoyed the marketing piece of it. And even though I've only been doing it for a good five years – it's like all my years before that as a physical therapist, it's very much the same. You're meeting someone in one moment, you're like coming to a diagnosis by asking them questions, you're figuring out a solution for them, and then you're selling them on the like plan. And I would say it's 100 times easier doing it from a marketing piece, because when I'm selling people on a plan, I'm selling them on how to like, okay, here's your strategy of like, how to get more leads or how to get more money or whatever. Whereas like, the physical therapy world was always like, oh, hey, here's these exercises you're going to do and it's going to hurt, but you're going to get better. So uh, that's helped. It's just kind of just how my brain works. I look and I just see, oh, like if I was selling that, oh, that's how I would say it, you know? So, and then with the Facebook component of it or any of these social media platforms, it's just a matter of tinkering, I think. Like you just start doing it and you push more buttons. Like the first story I made was back in August of 2018 before people ever even really knew stories existed. 
so when you think about that, it's like, you know, we're almost, it'll be five years soon. You create one or two, three stories a day. You do it for five years. You just get better at it. Like that can, you just get better by doing it more. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, and I've had to endure the arrival of all of these things. I mean, story started 10 years after I started online. Like there's always a new thing coming. So I actually rely on seeing what people like you do because they inform what's coming. I, I've got my little satellites, my beacons of intelligence that I'd say, okay, that's coming down the line. This is interesting to me. When you're doing the YouTube video, how do you actually get them to the Facebook group? Do you put it in the description or do you tell them in the video or do you link to it somehow? Yeah, I almost always say it in the video. Like if I'm doing, it just is natural. Like if I'm showing them a tutorial on how to insert some button or something, I'm like, hey, by the way, like like as I'm teaching, I'm just like hop in the free Facebook group called Create Stories That Sell. Like it just fits. Um, and so that way it flows people. And then I have entry questions. And so there's all this level of then I can start to get a feel for like, who's qualified, like from a membership standpoint, not to say that I don't want to help everyone, but there's some people where I'd rather send them to I have a lot of different free content that's available that may suit them best where they're at right now. It's like consume that first, apply it, see how it goes. But yeah, in the video, I usually just bring it up. And I also people are visual. So I like to put like I have my um, team member, I mean, she's always putting up like a picture of it, right? So people see it, they resonate with it. So when they go to get on social media and click, they see the same thing. So it makes it very seamless. Look, a, a trustworthy, consistent look and feel. When they're in the free Facebook group, how do you manage that where they're not just getting access to you and asking all these questions, but not buying anything? Right. That's a great question. Um, so I limit it, right? Like how much I'm I'm interacting in the group, maybe that just to be honest, like I'm not in there always replying to every single comment. Um, I do, you know, if people post and ask questions, I'll approve them. I won't always answer. Sometimes I will. I'll link back to YouTube videos that I filmed or things that I've filmed. A lot of the times when I'm asking questions in the group, I'm actually using those just as ideas that I'm putting down on. Okay, if you hear some great YouTube videos to film, I will give away like some of the information on how to do it in a YouTube video, but not all the information and definitely not the streamlined way, right? Like where it's like, oh, if you do this, this, and this five minutes later, here's your result. You know, it's like, no, you're going to have to do some more work on your end aside just from what I'm giving you for free, uh, right? Like I know, I mean, this not off topic, but even in one of the trainings that I listened to in your membership that you had a guest speaker on that was talking about just how to train your team member and the different platforms you use and seeing it, it literally made it where I like could take that and then go create, I went and created the exact same thing and used the exact same platforms. And it was so simple. Whereas, you know, you may talk about that in like 25 or 30 different podcasts and a few blogs here and there but to get it all packaged in one nice like okay here's an hour watch it go do it you just can't you know get the same so in my group like I'm providing value but I'm definitely you know I always tell the free group I'm pretty blunt I'm just like hey I, I save the best for my members right like they're the ones that get access to me every single day to ask questions and I answer them Oh, it's really interesting because I've I've not done the free Facebook thing other than my Maldives Mastermind, but they're all paying customers, so that probably doesn't even count. But I like with the podcast, as you said, I can talk about concepts and I can mention stuff and people can figure out if they're a relevant fit or not to the solutions. But in the membership, the big difference is they've got me. I can respond to them. I can customize and tailor. And of course, as you know, I'm, I'm going through my old trainings and I'm saying, okay, this, this one-hour training was amazing. And I've got about 90 of them. But what would a one-page playbook look like if I just strained this coal into a diamond? And, and that's my focus lately. I'm sure you've seen a couple, but taking the essence of it. But again, I've opened up comments so people can say, does it work with this software or can I use it for this market or whatever? And, and just constantly having that higher level of value than what you can access by just um, one-sided consuming. There are some people who can one-side consume and implement and they're you know, self-taught, pragmatic type people. And to some extent, that's a lot how I learn. But the people who do want customization or whatever, that's, that's like intensely valuable. 
and especially when there's a community who can crowd around that. And I understand that you're offering people uh, solutions at a couple of different levels. I have two levels in my membership where people can join, consume the information. We're really without any coaching. Um, and then I have a coaching level where it's popping on Zoom like this. And, you know, I've debated at times like where I don't sell the lower level simply because you just see how people grow so much faster with the coaching. But like you said, there can be some that grow with both. I think the main thing that I love with the coaching and that people get in that membership is it's feedback, right? Like they can watch something and do something all day long inside a membership. But until they go do it and they're like, oh, Steph, I did this and it didn't work. And it's like, okay, well, let's go look at that, right? Like, let's go look at what you're doing on Facebook or TikTok or wherever you're at, right? Let's go look at your YouTube and see. And then to be able to say, oh, hey, like, you know, this is great. This sucks. Change this. Oh, you should have put that at the top, right? Like just being able to give people that direct feedback. So then they go do that and they're like, oh, wow, like, yeah, it worked. And that's to me the, you know, the difference there with the levels of the membership, because at times uh, you just need that to grow. You need someone saying, hey, you can keep doing the same thing again and again, maybe get some results. But at some point, it's like, if you really want to speed up the process, let someone look at what you're doing and say, hey, this and this isn't that great. Like, change it. Yeah, or just pay for someone's attention. Exactly. And get the right help. It's funny, like our call started a little late because I had a, a burst water issue and I uh, found out that my neighbor a couple of doors down is very handy and has tools and stuff. <laughs> so I was able to ask him for help and he came up with his wheelbarrow and shovel and, and boots and pliers and pipe and stuff and, and we were able to, to find it and fix it. But knowing who to ask and to get the right help, I don't have any of those tools and I didn't even have a clue where to start to fix this. And it had to be fixed quickly. So it's an interesting point you made about the two levels. If I were to start from scratch today, there's no way I would have the lowest tier of my membership. I would only have the middle tier. And I've actually been bringing people from the higher tier back to the middle tier lately to free up my week. And I have deleted all annual plans so that I can make a choice down the track if I don't want to have the, the lower tier that I can just give a month's notice and turn it off because as it works out when I look at my numbers when I look at any other clients always the middle or the higher tier is where the, the vast majority of the reward comes from and I actually had someone recently buy the lower tier and then send me a question about things and I said you know I, I feel like you're probably not on the correct level for what you're trying to achieve and and how much support I can offer if you take the next level up and they went up to the next level now we're in the perfect solution because now I can go deep. I can do full diagnostics. I can get them on a call if I want. We have weekly group calls. The harmony and the vibration of that middle tier where they're working together and becoming a, a pack, the Shramco pack, if you like, <laughs> TM, they just make progress faster for the level that they're at. And it also is more entertaining and interesting for me. And I feel like I'm growing more when I'm stretching with um, tough challenges to solve and where I'm wrangling these really creative and talented people. So I think it's important when you set up a membership, over time it will reveal the parts that you like the most and, and don't be afraid to prune or, or trim just like a, a out of control bush. Sometimes you just got to prune it right back. If you want it to grow taller, you cut down all the, the bits down low and out the side so that it can go up. It's great you're in this perfect point. You've... Just to recap, you've really only been online for five minutes, <laughs> like in the general scheme. You just you started this membership only a few years ago. You've far exceeded the uh, the average wage for your country. You still have you've got young children. You're still doing your, your sporting pursuits, and you've um, been able to uh, replace the family income. And you enjoy it, and you're good at it. It's like you're doing what I'm doing. You, you're like the you're a dream client for me, of course, but. Uh, at the same time, I can relate so much to the journey on because that, that's the journey that I was on. And it just gets better and more interesting as it matures like a fine wine and I'm excited for where it's going. I'm curious, 
what advice would you have for someone who's not at the stage you're at, but maybe they're in the early phases you're at? And you keep sort of mentioning in uh, your post, but also today you've mentioned mindset. What sort of advice would you have for someone mindset wise? Well, first of all, getting, I mean, it maybe sounds weird, but getting help. Like for me, in my position, life-wise with little kids, I know that I hired a team member early on or like that I was, I think, you know, I think I was maybe making $1,500 a month. Like it wasn't that much money, but I knew that if I had the help time-wise, I could go so much further. And so being willing to like, for that, that was like a gut instinct and again, gravitated to you. So following that and especially for the mom entrepreneurs out there that are juggling so many things. It's like, there's got to be a give and a take. And so finding people that can take things off your plate so you can do it, so you can actually think and have the vision to drive your own business forward is huge. And then I always tell my members, I'm like, you know, when they're like, hey, you know, I want to be at 15K a month. That's like, well, okay, well, how would 15K a month Sally show up today? Like, what does her life look like? And not just from like, a, ooh, this money rolling in, but it's like, what is she eating for breakfast? How is she taking care of her body? Like, what is she doing? What decisions are, is she making? And knowing that there are going to be harder choices, right? Like, it's, I think still even a few months after I got started and my VA was like, oh, I'm pregnant. And it was like, okay, great. Like I was so excited for her as a mom. And I was like, okay, we can do this. We can figure it out. But at the same point in time, you shift the roles where it's like, now you're the one making all those decisions. And so it just forces you to keep, you know, doing and learning things that are a bit beyond where you feel comfortable, right? Like, so I know we talk about being uncomfortable all the time in business, but what does that actually look like in your day and in your life? And if you're not uncomfortable, you know, even for me, like hopping on a Zoom with you, it's like, it's not my favorite thing to do, even though I make videos all the time. It's like, I can edit the video. Um, and so, you know, it's like, but just being willing to do that because, well, that's what a 15K a month Sally shows up and does. I love it. You're putting the emphasis on the, the B rather than the, what do I get? It's kind of like that metaphor of the fire. Like you, you have to chop the wood and stack the fire and light it the little sticks first before you get the heat from the fire and a lot of people are walking around in life saying give me some heat and then I'll go and build a fire it doesn't work that way right I think that's from the go-giver and you've just got this strong mental attitude it's really great to see and no surprise how you're getting the results I appreciate you being a member but also for stepping up and saying yes I'm happy to come and share my story as a podcast platform I'm really interested in bringing people onto the show who who are a great example of what's possible, of commitment and putting in that discipline, but building a lifestyle to, to, you know, it brings on new challenges. I bet you had a mental challenge of, wow, things are actually going quite well and not as there isn't this effort or hardness about making the money like there were when I was back in a physical practice. How did you deal with that? I think part of it is just, for me, as much as the business stuff may always be fine, it's still juggling all the hats, right? Like I still have a three-year-old at home. And even this last year with moving across the country, it's like uh, your entire social support network, it's like we built from scratch again. And so it's like the whole schedule is thrown up. You don't have the routines of even having your environment the way, you know, I don't have the you know, the pretty books by color in the background when I'm doing my videos, you know, it's like all in the moment and just showing up and having to do it. And so I find that a lot of the challenges that as my business has grown, it's not necessarily the challenges from the business perspective, but still just how do I do that on top of the rest of life, right? Like, we love to talk about it, like it's these separate categories. But it's like, even like you said, right before this, it was like, oh, like, fight and burst, like dealing with that. And that affects how you show up in your job. And so I know a few years ago in my membership, I had a guy that trained on just how to increase your, your capacity for dealing with stress. And he talked about the fact that it had to be not just in your education or your relationships, but also your habits. You have to increase in all three because how you perform at work is going to affect your home life. Home life is going to affect the other. And so I think for me, one of the things I've really gotten good at is just being able to 
mentally, mindset wise, close the door on the three year old who may be screaming a fit and the next second step into filming a YouTube video and be on and do a great job and just learning how to to do that over time despite it. So I think those are the things this last year. And as my business has grown, just looking at like, okay, to step into that power of of doing that well. I love it. You're talking about resilience. I had to really wipe my feet off of the mud as I walked in and turned the camera on, right? <laughs> Um, my main, you know, my only concern about the burst of water was not the water or or, whatever, or any expense to fix it. It's like I can't be late for this call that, you know, I'm the host. And so I sent you a picture of us uh, out in the mud uh, before, you know, early as much as, as soon as much notice as I had to, to explain what's happening. But it, it's never going to run smoothly, that's for sure, as an entrepreneur. You're going to have these wrinkles. It's how you deal with them. It's how you react that's going to define you. You're great. What a great character. Your website is stephanieparisi.com and uh, that's S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-P-A-R-I-S-I.com. We're going to link to that in the show notes here for episode 1006. Uh, It's been great to have you on and, and thank you for being a member of my world and thanks for all your social media insights that I'm still catching on your socials. I uh, appreciate what you're doing and, and helping all these mums to have a better life. It's it's an honourable thing. And with a four-year-old, I can truly relate to just how important it is to have, you know, all of these things managed in a, in a fairly good order or else it can be chaotic. Definitely. This is James Schramko. 